in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception a stronghold is a sustained comma faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception A sustained pattern based on lies and deception often enforced by the presence of demon spirits often enforced by the presence of demon spirits are we following tonight praise the Lord now I've always talked about this issue of mindsets and patterns because believers have not yet been opened to see the extent of the damage that a wrong mindset can cause to their lives and their destinies. Let me define the word mindset so that we can tie it up together before I begin to teach. I've taught it again and again, but I found out that repetition is the key to persuasion. When people keep hearing a thing again and again they suddenly build trust over that thing what is a mindset a mindset is an ideology a mindset is an ideology it's a value system a mindset is a way of thinking so when we talk about mindsets we talk about ideologies everyone say ideologies we talk about value systems say value systems now it is very very important because when God wants to work with a man there are a number of challenges that he can face and one of the greatest in my opinion is the subject of mindsets and strongholds I wrote here that when demons fortify a mindset and use it as their gateway into a person's life the mindset becomes a stronghold are you getting that now i'll take it again i'm reading it because i want you to write it down when demons fortify a mindset an ideology a thinking pattern and use it as their gateway into a person's life that mindset is called a stronghold that means a stronghold is a mindset that has been crystallized by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the person consistently thinks that way. One of the things I've learned about mindsets is that mindsets are gates and doors in the spirit realm. Absolutely. Gates and doors that can authorize the entrance of the word of God of God and, or, and the things of the kingdom or authorize the operations of demons in people's lives. Please follow me very carefully because God wants to set us free. When demons fortify a mindset and they use it as their gateway into a person's life, that mindset becomes a stronghold. See, 
The Bible tells us not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word devices, there's the word stratomai. That means his strategy. The strength of Satan is not in an ability he has in himself. The strength of Satan is the advantage of spiritual knowledge that he knows. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not like Satan is powerful as a person. His power is based on the advantage that he was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom. And although he was thrown down, he still has that knowledge. So there are too many pathways that he can navigate in the spirit to get to a man's life. That's what becomes the strength of Satan. Are you following what I'm saying now? So Satan is very is very smart because he, he has knowledge of different pathways to access a believer's life. And if we do not know how to shut these doors against him, our Christian experience may be barren and we may never truly fulfill destiny. Are we getting blessed? Strongholds. Mindsets. I wrote a few thoughts about mindsets and let's write them down. Mindsets are gates, I've said that, and doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit or the, the operation of demons. Mindsets. They are gates and they are doors in the spirit realm. That means when Satan freely accesses a man's life, there is a stronghold that authorizes his operation in that person's life. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit seems to find expression in a person's life, among other things, there is also a stronghold, a mindset that permits his operation. Number two, a man's life is directly, or the quality, the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset. Absolutely true. Proverbs 23 verse 7. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, he equates your life to your thought pattern, your mindset. The quality of a man's life, the quality of my life and your life, spiritually, financially, and otherwise, the quality of my life is highly dependent on my mindset. The Bible here says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinking, that means that your life revolves around your ideologies. Please, are we learning something tonight? That means God can never change your life until he does something about your mindset. Your life is the child that your mindset is birthing or has birthed. And it will continue to birth rubbish according to what is inside until there is a change. Another thing I said about mindsets is that mindsets define our limits and possibilities in life. Mindsets define our limits and our possibilities in life. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Mindsets define our limits. That means your limitation in life is according to your mindset and your possibilities in life are also according to your mindset that's the reason why you can have two people same people but there are possibilities that one may be able to do and the other one may not be able to step in the bible says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring it forth what that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart that which is evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks hallelujah we talk a lot about words and the creative power of spoken words but words don't just evolve themselves like that they are products of ideologies men speak according to their perceptions about god about life about themselves about their destinies Hallelujah. Another thing I want you to know about mindsets is that a man's mindset can limit God in his life. 
very serious issue. As mighty as God is, as great as God is, a man's mindset can limit the operation of God in his life. Psalm 78, verse 41. Let's look at something very interesting there. The psalmist was writing about the nation of Israel with Moses. Psalm 78, verse 41. Is God speaking to anybody? It says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God. And they did what? They limited the Holy One. A man can limit God in his life. A man can make God look small in his life. How did they limit God? Let's go to verse 19 and 20. Verse 19 and 20 tells us how they limited God. Still the same Psalm 78. Please let's hurry up. I have a lot to talk about and then I want us to pray. There is so much that God wants to do in our lives. Let's read verse 19. Want to read. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? So while they were in the wilderness, they said, does God have that? Yes, I know God is mighty. But based on what I know about him, is he that mighty to make a table in the wilderness? Verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock. I've seen that one. I know he did it. And the waters gushed out. And the streams overflowed. But can he give bread also? Yes, I know that he did this. He healed cancer. But can he really heal HIV? Can he provide meat or flesh for the people? Okay, I understand the logic between water and rock. Maybe some scientific things happen and he just took advantage of science. Amazing. The Bible says they limited God. That means God wanted to do many things. He wanted to show his outstretched arm over the nation of Israel but their mindsets limited him there are many of us here in this place that if only we could align it would be amazing how far God can stretch his hand upon our lives and do wonders in and through our lives but that one limitation mindsets and over time, that ideology has become prolonged. When demons came, they saw that this mindset is the exact doorway that they need to your life. And they fortified it. You know what it means to fortify it? That means to build a fence around it. To make sure that this becomes your thinking pattern no matter what happens. Are you getting what I'm saying? When a man is suffering from a stronghold, even when you hear the word of God, you bring that word and subject it to your mindset. And the activities of these spirits make you to resist the possibility that the word of God offers. How are mindsets formed? How do we get these mindsets? Number one, culture. Culture. I think it was the school of ministry students or the final year people were talking and then we, we talked on this too. Culture. There are ideologies that we have adopted because of where we are coming from. Our cultural values. Right? And it's not every part of culture that is wrong. But there are certain aspects of culture that are occultic. They are wrong. They are demonic. And we, you know, we grew up knowing it to be the norm. And we have adopted it. When we gave our lives to Christ, we didn't divorce from it. We incorporated it as part of our Christian experience. And so, although we are born again, those mindsets still remain doorways. Is God speaking to anyone tonight? Culture. The influence of culture. We have all kinds of tribes in Nigeria with their history. Is that true? We have people from down south, west, middle belt, north. 
and all of that we have people from the extreme north we have the yorubas the Igbos, south south hausa people middle belters and all of us have all kinds of history about our culture is that true and can i tell you the truth the way you are looking at me right now many of you you love god you are born again but the devil can sing choruses in and out of your life without restraint because there is a part of culture that some of us have refused to let go there are it's amazing as young as we are there are some of us that your 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 love and affinity towards culture is very disturbing as young as you are when it comes to culture you behave as if you are 70 years old it must be done culturally as young as you are and you wonder my goodness what happened to this person hallelujah cultural influences they have defined our perception about god they have defined our perception about marriage is that true they have defined our perception about ministry there are all kinds of men of god doing ministry in nigeria and when you look at the ministry you see culture following the ministry too there are aspects of culture that will never leave because we have allowed it and for many of us now there are very positive aspects of culture morality respect and so on and so forth but i'm telling you there are culture was designed largely to accommodate the operation of demons and spirits are you aware of that and many of us are given that template and the devil's strategy is this he says become a christian you can become a christian i'm not stopping you but i want you to go together with that take two of them so you can be praying in tongues while i enter and wreak havoc in your life hallelujah so it is possible to find a christian right now the moment there is stomach pain he just remembers that there's there's one special kind of of concoction now i'm not just talking about um your ability to discern trees that heal that one you know that there are things that you add to it so the the man of god is born again but under certain situations huh? when you find out that they are not giving you the job after service you just call somebody and say is, is there nothing we can do about it what they are saying is ah let's go to the other way culture everybody say culture till today there are many for instance many tribes and many territories across nigeria that part of the rights that lead to marriage are largely occultic and devilish are you getting me in fact others they do certain direct devilish things you know it you know that this is invoking a spirit to come and guide you someone once told me about i won't mention where the person is from but then they told me that there is a spirit that they invoke when they're about to get married and he goes with the family you understand to make sure that they are protected and this is how our forefathers many of our let me tell you as you're laughing i hope you know that every single tribe tongue nation and territory in this country has contributed our share of permitting demons because of our culture i schooled at a particular place um careful I schooled at a particular place in in plateau state and um they had masquerades praise god can you still hear me are you with me they had masquerades and it was said that one of the masquerades that the guy had authority to command bees bees so if you did something wrong and they go and invoke the power of those masquerades you will just be walking on the street and all of a sudden you will find out that untold amounts of bees will just come and invade you and and the sting you know that the sting is not just a normal sting of bees because it's occultic everybody say culture there are some of us for instance before your parents release you to come to school or do anything they tell you there is a particular right or cultural right that you must be engaging am i being sincere tonight hallelujah and now 
For some of us, or many of us, in innocence, we have opened up ourselves and allowed these things to shape our mindsets. I know many cultures where when they give birth to children, they take the children to all kinds of places and they have some, some kind of fraternity with demonic spirits to protect and, and, and guide the children. And the demons will seemingly protect the children. But then it is at the expense of the destiny of that child. Everyone say culture. Number two. Mindsets are formed as a result of past experiences. You can put on your phone to just help you as you write. Past experiences. Whether good or bad, your experiences in life, it has a way of um, creating a mindset in you. I'll give you an instance. A lady who was probably abused growing up. Hallelujah. Maybe molested by a pastor or her relative or somebody may grow up having a mindset that all men are devils. All men are destructive, whether they are born again or not. In fact, there are still some of you sitting down right now. Probably you had three or four or five or more relationships. And maybe most of those relationships are with believers. But then at the end of it, you've had one disappointment or the other. And on the strength of those experiences, you have been able to draw what you call a logical conclusion. That all men are wicked. It's just that some are more wicked than others. All are wicked. You see that? So, when God wants to do great things in your life, something comes to limit you. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Number three, your mindset is formed by your level of exposure. Level of exposure. Thank you. I think I'm good. I'm okay. Your level of exposure. That means, now not to insult you, but if you grew up in the village, entirely in the village, you've not had any kind of uh, exposure, you grew up in the village, there are certain possibilities that exist in the village. Right? And you may not know that life can be lived at a higher level. Is that true? So you may be old, but the truth is that there is an ideology that you take along. Your level of exposure. There are people, for instance, who growing up, they never serve them food in their own plate. You know this kind of communal, these families with many children, especially polygamous families, they now say food is ready. Food is ready means secure your spot. Just find somewhere and sit down. Because whatever is a big, big plate, and wherever you can, if you, if you are strategic enough, good for you for that night. If you are late, bad for you for that night. Are you following me now? So, when those kinds of people are growing, it affects their concept of kindness. It affects their concept of generosity. Are you getting me? When you see someone carry a hamper, a Christmas hamper to bless somebody, say, ah, this is too much. Ah! I mean, how can you lavish everything just on one person? Because all through growing up, you shared everything plus your clothes. There was nothing you ever had that you were blessed with and you said, this is my own. Mindsets. Hallelujah. There are families, for instance, where father, mother, children all slept in the same room. Correct? Once it's night, everybody secures a very strategic area. Those who put two chairs together, those who put mats outside, huh? those who squeeze and do all kinds of things, mindsets. 
And so it affects you. Now, while you're laughing, I hope that you are, you are seeing how that mindsets are formed. Your level of exposure. And now, the danger is that if you, you are bankrupt in terms of exposure, if you are not careful when God now begins to expose you, huh, you will push yourself into some unnecessary exposure that will be swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Have you seen people like that? People who you never, you never would have been able to afford a shoe of 1,000. Now you are in a relationship with somebody and he bought you a shoe of 20,000 and said, no, my standard is more than this. You see the other side of the mindset. All your life you use shoe of 1,5, highest. Now you have a shoe of 20, you say, no, 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 no. I suffered growing up. I must make up for this thing. Mindsets. Is God speaking to us? Number four, your association. Mindsets are formed um, based on your association. If you've lived your entire life having wicked people, heartless people, bad brothers who bullied you, beat you up, you went to school, you had seniors who beat you up, bullied you, it creates a sense of complex and inferiority and many things happen to you. Associations. There are many people who became Christians easily because while they were growing up, they were surrounded by genuine people. Look at our little baby now, um, Faith. Our little baby in Koinonia. Imagine how this lady will begin to think I was having a fixed class with the school of ministry students and then while we were praying, praise God, while we were praying, I watched the little girl. She was praying in tongues and just moving. When they lift their hands, she will lift her hands. Mindset because of our association. That lady at age five or six will think like somebody at age eight because she has been relating with adults. That's how some of you, you are 17, but your mind is, is 41. Because all through, you never had a mate. All your mates, you did have mates. Your, the, your friends were ten times older than you. So you joke their joke at their level. So now that you are with your friends, when you talk, they say, ah, bros, how old are you? Mine's, have you seen people like that? Even the way they walk. You see the person walking and you're like, my brother, it's all well. You say, I'm like that, oh, please. Mindsets. There are people, when they crack jokes, they crack ancient proverbs. They can't crack anything, anything modern and contemporary. Where other people are saying, you know, if wishes were horses, the guy would just come with one kind of thing. Say, so when a, this and that happens, and you are looking at it and say, my brother, the last time I read this was in one tribal dictionary. Where did you get it? That's all he's known all his life. Everyone say mindset. Your association. You grew up with your grandfather. You grew up with your grandmother. Their possibilities were your possibilities. Their jokes were your joke. You ate what they ate. Now they ask you what's your best food. You mention something nobody knows. Because all through, that, that's what you have been exposed to. Now, follow me, please. God is taking us somewhere this night. Number five, your family background. Sadly, if you grew up from a poor family, there is something it must have done to you. Must have done to you. No matter how godly or otherwise you are. If you grew up from a very wealthy family, if you grew up from a Christian family, there are some of us that grew up in polygamous families that are mixed. Is that true? Some were believers, some were non-believers. There are some of us that grew up in all kinds of family settings. And these things have created an impression in us. For instance, if you grew up in a polygamous family, based on what you saw growing up, you knew that your mother's side and your stepmother's side, everybody protected their own interests. Is that true? Now you come to ABU and your friends are saying, let's feel free. Say, no, I don't feel free. I, I protect and I guard my thing. And they're saying, no, we're innocent people. 
They fetch water for you, you refuse to use it to bath. And they say, uh-uh, we're all koinonia. They say, koinonia, wickedness is real. You see, a mindset. You came back and you saw that your roommate fetched your food. You say, God forbid, I will eat again. Because that's what happened probably between your stepmom and your mom. So you just felt that, uh-uh, the moment you are sick, you are suspecting all your roommates. Who is doing this? Somebody in this room, a man's enemies are the people. In your mind, you are talking about your own house. Mindset. To an extent that even when you say God has blessed you with something and they say we rejoice with you, you get angry. Because you are used to it. When they said they rejoice with your mother, that is scattered. So now they say they rejoice with you. You say you rejoice. I'm saying I'm marrying. I'm getting married. And you say you are rejoicing with me. See, mindset. We have had unnecessary enemies because of our mindsets. Family background can influence mindsets. Let's look at one more. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your failure and your limitations in life can build a mindset in you. Failure and limitations in life. You probably wrote jam 10 times before you got admission. Praise God. Or some kinds of things. Maybe you had to write Wayek many times. Or when you were in primary school, you had to repeat. Or secondary school. All these things are mind builders. They create mindsets in us. Now, the danger is this. Please look up. The danger is this. That mindset creates your picture about what you perceive life to be. Are you getting me? The mindsets that you have, they are like, they are like paint brushes. So, they can paint to you a picture of what the world looks like. A picture of what friendship looks like. In fact, a picture of what God looks like. You probably trusted God for something. Trusted God as a family. Nothing happened. And the worst of all happened. And then another one happened. Maybe a tragic event. And then another one happened. And then another one happened. Have you seen parents that when you say, God is faithful, they just say, God? Who are you talking about? God? Which God? Where was God when they were driving me out of my house? Where was God when maybe my wife or husband was dying? Have you heard people like that? Where was God? When my child was dying of cancer. So because of their failures and their limitations, it has created a mindset about God. So when you sing all these songs about the faithfulness of God, and you read scriptures like, since I was um, young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. That man who said the psalmist lied. Because there is nothing in his life to verify that that is true. Hallelujah. And so you now compose a song with that scripture. And the person calls you a liar. Because he says, God, there, there are people today that believe in anything that works. Whether it's God, an idol, because they believe that, look, oh, if you depend on God alone, you will fail. So add whatever works. And that was the whole concept of the Egyptian, Egyptian religion. They had many gods because they believed that gods were limited. So one had a unique grace for, first, for fertility. Another one had grace for um, um, protection. Another one had grace for wisdom and oratory. So they believed that when you serve all of those gods, you will have the complete picture of a good life. Now look at me. Did you realize that your understanding about life today, your understanding about God, and your level of impact and breakthrough in life has largely been limited by your mindset? And for some of us, it's no longer a mindset. It has become a stronghold. 
Why has it become a stronghold? Because demons saw that mindset. And they saw that this is the exact kind of mindset that permits their operation in an area of your life. So they came and fortified that mindset to make sure that you do not even realize there is a problem with it. Hallelujah. So every time God wants to do great things in your life, those strongholds limit him. God wants to make you prosperous. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to heal and bless you. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to take you from glory to glory. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to give you a good husband, a good wife, a good job. God wants you to excel and break limits, but those mindsets limit him. There are many people who may never enjoy a good home because there are poisonous strongholds that they have about, about fatherhood, motherhood, parenting, and so on and so forth. There are some of us right now, we don't have any friend in our lives. The truth is there are no friends. All the friends that we have are just our regular church people who just, just because of our connection. But we don't have destiny friends. And the reason is our mindset. There are some of us, you fight with everybody you come across with. Once you are friends with the person, after two weeks, you are already fighting. Something about your mindset keeps telling you that everybody hates you. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have settled down and we have believed that we will never amount to anything in life. Why? Because family background, culture, everyone in your family was a failure. The richest man in your family was a carpenter. And he probably had a bike. That's it. So it's a mindset. Out of the 20 or 30 people in your extended family, nobody has risen past secondary school. A mindset. And you have accepted it. So even when you push through to, to get a degree, you say, even if I don't get a job, I've tried. After all, I'm better than these ones that stop there. Whereas God wants to take you to the nations. Everyone shout, change my mindset, oh Lord. Mindset. Shout it one more time. Change my mindset, oh Lord. Mindset, oh Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest deliverance that can happen to a man is not just that demons are casted out, but that that there is a change, a reconfiguration of your mindset such that you authorize heaven to now begin to carry out only the things that are consistent with the word of God in your, in your life. I look at people, I've had the privilege of traveling to many places in this country. And when I travel, I like studying the culture and the ideology of the people. And oftentimes when we travel, if we are spending more than a day or two, they usually take us on a tour around the major areas of the city. They show us different things and all of that. And I have been amazed. I have been shocked and sometimes surprised at the ideologies that can be across a territory. Let me give you one. Um, in 2007, when I was in Port Harcourt, when I got there for the first two or three weeks, I was laughing every day. And the reason was because I have never seen that a man can be angry and slap your car. Are you getting that now? I mean... You push somebody and he's angry and then he slaps your car. Pam! The metal. Oh. And to him, he believes that that slap is supposed to have gotten to you. I said, my goodness. You slap a metal, your hand is paining you, the person in front does not realize and it's supposed to be a communication of your pain. Say mindsets. Number two, Lagos. I have always wondered how a man will rush and hurry his life like that. 
I mean, you hurry your life, almost enjoying yourself. You are trying to drop, trying to climb. And in the midst of the car, there's someone preaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. And somebody's dropping. And they're hurrying up. And I'm wondering, my goodness, a combination of spirituality and foolishness coexisting? Mindsets. Hallelujah. I went to a particular region in this country and I found out that it was the women that were on bike. As in bike, as in bike machine. My goodness. Yes, the ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies on bike. And I said, where are the men? How can a man buy bike, bike and give his wife and say, you know, go and farm or do whatever with it. Mindsets. Could it be that there are certain things that God has wanted to achieve in your life this year, 2014, but up till now, your mindset has refused to give him entrance? Can I tell you something? Before we blame Satan over everything, I am telling you now, that Satan is not so powerful. The strength of Satan is the ability to build strongholds around your mindset. Is God blessing us? That's why you find out that there are people. Have you seen people you pray over their situation and nothing happens? Because the truth is their mindset opposes that prayer. The Bible says that we can pull down these strongholds. We can pull down these strongholds. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them. Yet, their situations did not change. See that? It's not all about demons. There are strongholds that are resident within our minds. And tonight, God will grant us grace to deal with it. How do you pull down these strongholds? Let's look at it quickly. How do you pull down these strongholds? Seeing that they are destructive. Man of God, could it be that there is more God can do with your life and ministry? But your mindset, your mindset. I was teaching the school of ministry and I told them, the ministry students, I told them, I said, think world class. Think world class. You can start from Jerusalem, but don't die in Jerusalem. Jesus, listen, listen. They said this about Jesus. Nathaniel said in John chapter 1, he said, can anything good come out of where? Let me, t let me talk to you a bit before we talk about how to pull down strongholds. Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right? Is, is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt across a region for a very long time. They have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have, they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region that's why they are called familiar they understand everything about the lineage they understand everything about that territory and they have been able to study patterns and they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of that's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations is that true there are tribes that their own their own um, unbecoming is immorality. Is that true? There are tribes that their own is hatred. There are tribes that their own is anger. There are tribes that the men are careless. Is that true? Generally careless. Born again or not born again. The men are just careless. There are tribes and territories where in almost any every family, you must find one or two daughters that... Um, may have a child before marriage. Is that true? 
there are other families that you out of 10 people you may find only one that can sustain their marriage familiar spirits they build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their entrance so the man of god may be in ministry but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter and he finds out that although he's in ministry that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry and there are many doors god will send partner to the ministries he will drive them out because of anger are you seeing that now how do you pull down these strongholds number one you must first recognize and admit the need to take on a renewed godly mindset you will never never receive the help of god if you do not recognize and admit that you need help there are many arrogant people with messed up mindsets who will never accept that something is wrong with their ideologies the first step to your deliverance hear me brothers and sisters is not that hands are laid on you is that you come to a point where you think about your life and look at me in the next one minute i like everybody under the sound of my voice think about your life is this the best if you don't come to a point where you think about your life you may die in that level forever think about your life why am i behaving the way i always behave why have i attracted all kinds of woes into my life is this the best of my destiny why is it that every man that comes into my life in two weeks he will go away leave the issue of demons they gave you a job after two weeks you fought with your superiors they drove you you went to another place after two weeks you fought with your superiors the third one the day they gave you the job you slapped your boss they said this way out never come back again something is wrong some of us our mindsets have driven all our destiny helpers all there are some of us our mindset about money has kept us poor and will keep us poor forever god will bless you with ten thousand naira you carry all of that ten thousand naira no tithing no giving you carry it and go and eat in a restaurant you call your friends let's come and enjoy ourselves mindset because you think your respect and honor is based on the money you have and that's what you got probably from culture are you getting my point now so you think that you will be well respected and you go out of your way make money only to carry it and spend it your concept of making money is to have something to spend because the more you spend the more you are respected mindsets so you see a man who is working and earning two hundred and fifty thousand, but you will go to the village for christmas or new year at the end of the year and blow three million naira trying to impress people and come back broke and sell one of his car only to begin the hard work again after 40 years of working he has not been able to do anything and live for his children everybody say mindset there are some of us we have mindsets and we believe through those mindsets that we can never do anything on our own and that's the basis for your doing malpractice you are born again you are every even this exam now some of you it has started some of you to start there is a a predetermination already malpractice i must do it it's just that it will not be as great as the last one at least i'll be here but i must do it for some of you i will look for chokes but if they bring it i will refuse mindsets have you not heard of parents organizing waek Huh? why egg and jam and flogging their children for not receiving the chokes mindsets because they think that no matter what will happen let the child just move forward their ego is at stake and they don't care whether the child is understanding or he's moving legitimately or not when we come into the kingdom one of the primary ministries of the holy spirit is begin to expose us to a point where we realize that the mindsets we have at the moment is not sufficient to take us to the place where God wants to take us. 
How many of you can admit tonight that I, I want to take responsibility? Some of you, you have been blaming everybody from your father to your mother. You are blaming everybody. You are now blaming your friend. You are now blaming everybody. You will take that bad attitude and blame your husband and your wife. When children come, it will now be children. How many of us tonight can say, I take responsibility? My mindset needs upgrading. There's no denying it. See, let me tell you, when you come before God, you must be like a child. You must allow yourself. It's not your fault. Some of us, that's the reality you lived with all your life. Now God is challenging you. There are two groups of people in this place tonight. Those who will argue it and throw away what I'm saying. And allow the devil to keep fortifying that mindset. And after 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find out that nothing has moved. I found out that time does not change things. New decisions bring new changes in life. For 38 years, a man was lying down at a pool called Bethesda. But in less than 5 minutes, when he did something differently from a renewed mindset. You know his problem? Anger and bitterness. Jesus said, what will I do for you? He said, no, every time I want to do this, all these people, and Jesus said, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. You have refused to move forward because you think your friend married the man who will be your husband. Ten years, they've given birth to five children. You are still there angry. They cannot even remember the events that happened. Say, in this life, there are some people, even in heaven, blah, 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 keep talking. They are moving. You are there dying. The devil has crystallized a mindset of hatred. There are some of us that hate our parents. It's true that they treated you bad. But you know that you must honor your parents for your days to be long. And now God is telling you let go. So that you can take on something new. Me? God forbid. Mindsets. God wants to take us to new levels. Brothers and sisters, there is no telling how far God is going to take you. Look at Joseph. Joseph had a dream, a great dream, to be a great man in life and destiny. He shared the dream with his brothers and he paid dearly for it. After many years, he now became the prime minister in Egypt and his brothers came. He would have been angry to hold on to that resentment. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit who can bear. There are some of us right now. God is speaking to you. There is a lot of forgiveness for you to do. If you must rise up. You are angry with everybody. Now you, are, you have joined the group. You, you are now angry with yourself. Everybody you are angry with has moved forward. Only you. Now you're angry with yourself for being angry with everybody. I, I don't even like life. Let me even die. You see, that's the point. But tonight you are hearing the word of the Lord. It's time to lay that mindset down. Some of us, you've been carrying your village on your head. And it has been punishing you for decades. It's now time to drop that thing and say it's true. I am from so, so, so place, but I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. I need to change. Many of us have mindsets about money, mindsets about marriage, mindsets about God, mindsets about everything. Some of us, because of our mindsets, you don't apologize because your mindset interprets apology as being cheap. So when you need to say, I'm sorry, you say, over my dead body, I'm sorry would have saved many people. Money, time, opportunities have been lost say the way I am I don't tell anybody I'm sorry I don't look for anybody's thing I don't care and God is saying apologize say for what mindset who knows maybe there are still some people here you come for koinonia but you don't talk to one another I can't apologize there are some of us mindsets have brought self-centeredness. Let everyone go to hell for as long as I'm doing well. It must benefit me first. When I'm satisfied, I now turn and I say, who is there?
I had to change a lot of things. Oh my goodness. I had terrible mindsets. When I started working with God, I had gotten some of these mindsets from my upbringing. I got these mindsets from my failures of the past. I got these mindsets, but I knew that where God was taking me to. See, you cannot give God your terms for greatness. You must subscribe to his terms. Many of us want to be great, but you want to be great at your terms. You say, Lord, these are my conditions. If you can bend to my little mold, that's your cup of tea. And God says, I am God. Do you know that something that has never been done in your family, you can be the first? But the question is, are you like the nation of Israel that has limited God? Sister, who told you God cannot use women? Who told you there cannot be women billionaires in your family? Everyone has suffered. You are planning to go and join them. I know one of our ladies in this place. They have a mindset in their family. She comes from a background where if you go to secondary school, just from a little, they just drag you and say, go and marry. You know there are backgrounds like that. They say you have tried. JS3 or SS1, that's good enough. Go and marry. And I know the lady and I've, I've honored her resilience. This lady has gone through all kinds of pressure from family that she should go and marry. And the lady said, I want to go to the university. There's much that God wants to do. They made arrangement of one man for her. And they were trying to cajole her to go home so that you pin her down. They'll marry and she refused. Let me tell you, breaking out of a mindset is difficult. You will be misunderstood. Because you are breaking status quo. Some of you, when you want to do something, your parents say every end of the year, there is something we bow to. And you say, Daddy, I love you and I respect everyone, but I'm tired. I'm now a child of God. Your father will say, how old do you think you are? I bow to this thing to pay your school fees. Why didn't you reject the school fees? I bow to this thing to buy the Bible that you are using. You better go and bow. But who tonight will be able to say, Lord, I recognize a need for a change of mindset. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. If you break that barrier between you and your destiny, you will fly on the wings of eagles. I don't care how bad things are right now. It doesn't take time. It only takes you cooperating with the Lord. Say, Lord, in my village, nobody has done this. In my family, nobody has done this. But right now, I make up my mind to partner with the Holy Spirit. You may be one in a million, but you must be the first to stand up and arise and say, I'm going to break this status quo. This status quo of witchcraft. Everybody in your family has died at 30. You will need to change your mindset and say, no way. No way. My father's elder brother died at a particular age. My father's younger brother died at a particular age. When he was getting to that point, thank God that we had had some spiritual knowledge. And we prayed and we labored in the spirit. My father would have died in a miserable way. How to pull down strongholds. Number one. You must recognize and admit that you need a renewed godly mindset. You must. Every man that saw the mercy of God in his life had to come to a place where he broke down and humbled himself. God does not help arrogant people. If there is one thing that God does is to oppose the there are many of us probably for the first time in your life. Today will be your, the first time your pride will be broken. To say, Lord, finally, finally, I get down on my knees and I accept that my wrong mindset is the reason why I'm poor and broke. My wrong mindset may be the reason why I am not married. My wrong mindset is the reason why my ministry may not be growing. My wrong mindset may be the reason. See, if you break down, let it sting your ego. 
and let it go and let God step into your life. You will never, I'm telling you this, you will never get the attention of God with the arrogant nature that many of us have. God, if you are available, please come down. I think uh, I may need you one or two areas. God is not like that. If my people who are called by my name, the first thing that happens is they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn, repent, turn from their wicked ways. He said, then, not before, not during, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lives. The hand of the Lord is not too short over our destinies. Many of us need to get to that point of humility tonight. I know you are a great evangelist, bishop, pastor, but tonight, break down your pride and say, Lord, I ask for mercy. There is something up here that is permitting the devil to wreck my life. I had to come to a point in my life where I said, Lord, don't let me be a fool forever. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. All the mindsets that authorize demonic activities in my life. Take it away. I'm willing to pay whatever price. Who is ready to make that decision tonight? Oh, that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Nothing will ever change in your life. Nothing will ever change in your destiny. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming your father. Some of us are angry at where we are coming from. I wish I didn't come. Well, you are from there now. So you can as well calm down. You're already hoping that you will soon change your indigent certificate. That's not the issue. Indigent certificate will not change your destiny. When your mindset changes. Some of us have disowned our parents. Because they represent pictures of such failure you don't want to be associated. The day you look at your you have been telling everybody that your father is your uncle. It's time to tell the truth. Some of us have lied that our parents are abroad. They are not abroad. It's time to tell the truth. That man is my father. He may not have done well. But I will rise. What he could not eat, I will give him. Where he could not go, I will bring him. All this life of falsehood and lies and a fake impression of success will destroy us. We have to come to a point where we admit that there is something about our mindset. For some of us, it has become strongholds. You betray everybody that comes close to you. It's an attitude. It has never been an issue. You are a loving person. You love God. But you betray. You are not trustworthy at all. Any information they tell you is the same thing as telling a radio station. It's just like they took it to FM and said, let just tell the whole. And you are very happy. You are a pretty lady, but that's your own becoming. Every guy that comes after two weeks, he just does as if he's going to come back and disappears. Because every time they see that thing, the Bible says, Naaman was the captain of the army of Syria. Second Kings 5. He said, but, we must deal with the bots in our lives tonight. And if you are unwilling to take responsibility, let me guarantee you, you will never see the hand of God. Number one, Lord, I recognize I admit that the quality of my life today is dependent on my decisions which have been products of my mindset. I may not have seen things accurately, but right now I ask you to help me. Number two. Number two. How to pull down strongholds. After admitting this, Number two is casting out the demons that keep the faulty mindset. 
you must cast out those spirits that keep those mindsets because when a mindset has become a stronghold a demon spirit is involved you will never enter a man's house and spoil the goods until you bind the strong man and casting out demons there involves number one destroying their legal hold over your life the realm of the spirit is a legal realm please listen to me all these demon spirits and these principalities that leech over our destinies they do it on legal basis and the bible says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies. That's where we talk of covenants and curses and yokes that cast spells over people's minds. Control their mindsets. You must cast those demons. You must cast those devils. And if you think there is no spirit to cast out, you are joking. You are joking big time. There are wicked spirits that leech and become strongholds. So every time God wants to step into your life, they build fortifications. They have kept families poor. They have kept many people downcast. You must break their legal hold. It's not enough to cast out devils. That which gives them a legitimate ground on your life must be dealt with. And the blood is the mystery that solves that. Because the blood is a price in the spirit. The highest price. The price that can open any door. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Are we getting blessed tonight? We are getting into the heart of the matter now. Please let me have your attention. Let my life be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer a sacrifice of praise so fill this temple Lord with your spirit once again the Bible says in whom the God of this world are you seeing that there are spirits involved blinded their minds he did something it's an enchantment over your mind it's a spell that controls your mind no matter what you are told and that's what authorizes demons you sleep in the night and there are all kinds of spirits coming to molest you you go on prayer and fasting and in the middle of the prayer and fasting is still happening there is a legal hold it's not just in Jesus name go I'm telling you listen to me Oh yes. Whenever something good is about coming into your life, a man or a woman or a snake or a serpent or something, these are mysteries in the spirit. Demons don't find pleasure in anything. They, it's, 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 a, it's a mystery, it's a code in the spirit that activates the operation of failure. Some of you, is during exam, certain strange things happen to you enchantments mindsets that have been blinded by demonic activities and you want to rise every time you want to rise all they need to do is touch those codes and it brings you back you want to stop the clubbing you want to stop all of those things 
The day you make that determination, a strange mystery happens in your life and it reduces you back. You are in a dirty relationship that is ungodly. You pray and you make a vow and say, I'm going to send a text to this brother and say, enough is enough. I'm ready to move forward. And these mysteries are activated again. And you who said you will stop, you will now call him and carry your two legs and go to his house. It's not normal. But mindset. He said, in whom the God. And to make matters worse, you truly have a stronghold when they are talking to you and you do not even see the need for change. Have you seen people like that? That's the classic example. There are people that can be sitting. You are talking to them and to you it's supposed to be very clear that this rubbish they are doing is not taking them anywhere. And they look at you. When you finish, they just laugh. There are people like that. They will escort you for koinonia and come and leave you here. They'll say to her, bros, tomorrow now, it will be. And they turn back and you are wondering and powerful worship is going on in whom the God of this world, the God of this system has what? Blinded their minds. It's like a, it's not just blinded like, um, it's a spell. That's why some of our parents can be doing the things they are doing. Mindset. God will bless them. They will carry the money and be giving the children of rich people and you are dying in your house. Not even a rapper for your mother. They've not paid your school fees. And when you talk to them, they don't even see the need to change. They say, I know what I'm doing. The God of this world has blinded their minds. You must cast out the demons that fortify these mindsets and make them strongholds. Number three. When that happens, then you engage in what the Bible calls the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind is useless until there is first an admittance until the spirits that are responsible for holding this mindset are casted out. Then you are now released. Now look up please. This is the problem with many deliverance ministries in Nigeria. Listen to me. You think God is calling you into the deliverance ministry? Just listen to me before you add to this confusion that we have in this country. Many people fulfill the first condition. Yes, I think something is wrong. Something is moving in my body. Huh? Or I have repeated cycle of failure. Now you go to a man of God. Step one. Step two, you believe the demons are casted out. But number three, there is no renewal. And the Bible tells us the mystery of demonic operations. When a spirit leaves a man, huh, it goes through arid regions, dry places, seeking for a place of habitation and not finding any. This is what the demon will tell the man. He said, I will arise and go back to my house. He's still calling the man his house. And then he returns back and the Bible says he finds the place swept, clean, but empty. Swept, clean, but empty. And when the demon sees that is still the old mindset that is there, he now gathers seven other demons greater than itself and says, let's build a fortification. And you find out that the man's latter state is even worse. That's why you can see that a man can be delivered. Two months, he may get some level of breakthrough. And after three or four months, he gets back not even square one, square zero. And then we keep blaming a lot of men of God and saying, that, that means that my man, my man is not genuine. That deliverance is not true. We have a responsibility. The renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? It means to passionately pursue to know God's perspective about life. To renew your mind means to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed by the word of God. I take it again. The renewal of the mind means to passionately seek to know God's perspective about life. That's what I call wisdom. 
Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything. And then to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed in the word of God. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. It says, be not conformed to this world. The Greek word is aeon. The thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this system. There is an ideology that comes with this system. It said, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You're not there yet? By the renewing of your mind. He said that ye may prove that which is um, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. So how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That means there are things I've been doing that is probably keeping me poor. I've not been tithing. I've not been giving. I walk in a life of selfishness and materialism and self-centeredness. All of a sudden, those spirits and demons of poverty have leached through that mindset and created a stronghold out of it. Now I come and I make up my mind to want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And when I'm delivered from the operation of those demons, then I now begin to adopt heaven's ideology. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? And so on and so forth. And then... The moment there is that renewal, Satan comes and he cannot find his doorway to your life again. At that point, your liberty becomes permanent. Deliverance is never complete until it is backed up by a process of transformation. That's why people, people who get delivered and are not channeled to sit under a heavy teaching anointing where the principles of the kingdom are taught will go back, I guarantee you, back into what they were delivered from. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you. Let this mindset, permit this mindset to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. When Jesus walked the earth, he had a mindset. There was a mindset that made the waves and the, and the seas obey him. There was a mindset that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him. There was a mindset that made his enemies not to be able to resist nor can say his words. There was a mindset that helped, that made him to fulfill his assignment. And the Bible says, let this mind permit it to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And the instrument to get that, that mindset into you is the word of God. The word of God accurately taught and accurately explained. Number four. How to pull down strongholds. Number four. You need to take steps and make new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. You need to now take steps and start making new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. Your life became a disaster because you were taking steps based on a mindset that was ungodly. Now that you have paid the price to adopt a new mindset, start taking steps based on that new mindset. And you find out that your life will start changing. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. It says, finally brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure. Hallelujah. It begins to list certain things and it tells you think on these things. Let your mindset say so finally brethren whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, 
whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things allow these things to frame your mindset so that your decision will now become true honest just pure decisions philippians chapter 2 from verse 2 we looked at that but let's look at it again I announced to somebody tonight that the devil is a liar over your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ Philippians chapter 2 verse 2 please read together I want to read the apostle is speaking he said fulfill my joy that ye be like minded there is a mindset that I propose to you this is my admonishment. Please be like-minded. Don't have a different mindset. There is a, a mindset that made the Holy Spirit work mightily in me. He said, be like-minded. Be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Brothers and sisters, your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset. Your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset. The quality of your home is at the mercy of your mindset. The excellency of your spiritual life is at the mercy of your mindset. The quality of your finance or your level of finance is at the mercy of your mindset. Your level of greatness in life, among other factors, is at the mercy of your mindset. He leads me and guides me to the city of a he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen, God wants to take you far. But are you ready to hold on to his hands tonight and say, Lord, if it means me dropping certain devilish aspects of culture, it drops tonight. If it means me dropping certain aspects of my past, it will drop tonight. Listen, let me tell you something about your past. If your past does not inspire you, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. There is no reason to meditate and think about a past. I don't care what you have done. If your past does not inspire you, pack it up this night and throw it out of your life. Oh, holy God, I know you will not fail. God is concerned, you can count on him. God is dependable. God is reliable. His part of the equation is guaranteed. But the question is, are you ready to hold on to his hand? There are many of you that need to leave the hands of culture tonight. There are many of us that need to leave the hands of family backgrounds and association. Listen to me. Love is a command. Association is not. If you need to pack up from some devilish associations that will not take you to the place of destiny, I don't care how long they have been your friends, separate from them. 
Abraham had to leave the servants because he was going to climb a mountain. Do you realize that there is a place in destiny? God is dependable. God is reliable. Are you not tired of that habit? You have prayed and prayed and prayed. It's not just the issue of prayer. It's the issue of alignment. Alignment. Your anger has destroyed too many opportunities in your life. It's time to think about it. Your self-centeredness has destroyed too many open doors. Your hatred and resentment is a stronghold. Your affinity for immorality has wrecked more havoc in your life than you can imagine. But tonight, before we talk about demons, are you prepared? My job tonight is to bring you to a point where you see the need to embrace a new ideology. A little boy born in the States called Gray Farah is now a motivational speaker, multi-millionaire. At a very young age, was born by an African-American. Could not amount to anything. The family was poor. The gentleman was poor. But he made a decision to break status quo. And he started painting stones. Very tender age. He started painting stones. And giving people to cover. To put on their books. And people were laughing at him. He went from door to door. Because he knew that he had a prophetic destiny. To bring his family. Out of the financial misery. Hallelujah. Eventually. At age 12, that young boy became a multi-millionaire. At age 14, he was sitting on the board of over 10 companies. At age 20, he was given two honorary PhDs. He's 29 right now and is one of the most influential black millionaires in America. Men who decided to cooperate with destiny. Listen. No matter what is happening in your life, you are not the first to go through it. You can't sit down and keep regretting. Forget about what has happened. The Bible says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Some of us have meditated too much about yesterday. God gave you the gift of today and tomorrow to remedy the mistakes of yesterday. Every time you wake up to a new day, is God's gift to you that there is still hope for your life. We used to sing a song. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you. The relationship failed since last year but till now you have not moved forward you've used one year to regret whereas you would have gotten married you would have even been pregnant now one year to regret and the person that messed up your life has settled down he's even born again now maybe he's a pastor and you are there dying listen Two wrongs don't make a right. It doesn't matter what has happened. Retrace your steps now. Some of you played around with certain opportunities that God gave you. Accept tonight that it was because there was a mindset. Allow the Lord to adjust it and be ready to move forward. The Lord is going to be doing great things next week. But it's not enough. There are many of us. We've been coming for miracle service after miracle service. But every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life. There is a stronghold that frustrates his activity in your life. So it looks like your situation is so difficult. God cannot break through. It's not true. We have three prayer points tonight. The first prayer point. Is, is a cry before God 
Truly, I trust that God will grant us grace to admit tonight and take responsibility for the way our lives have been. For those of us who are experts at blaming people, forget about it. Take responsibility. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides Come on, join us if you can sing. To the place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me song is a prophetic song listen as you raise this song i like you to wave goodbye to the past we're going to start by dealing with the past i don't care what went right or wrong 2013 2000 and whatever is gone as you raise this song i like you to announce to your destiny that you are still coming job said though he slay me yet will i praise him hallelujah we're going to sing this song and I'd like you to sing it from the depths of your heart that he's leading you. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads Go ahead. Goodbye to the failures of yesterday. To the failures of yesterday, this one thing I do forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past, forgetting the past. I said to us, I press towards the past. Forget about the past, sing it as a prophecy over your life. He leads me, he leads me, and guides me to the city of above. Sing it as a prophecy. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. Listen. There was a man in the Bible called Saul of Tarsus. The Bible tells us that that guy had a mindset based on his ideology. He thought killing believers was a way to please God. But on his way to Damascus, he encountered a light. When he encountered a light, something happened to him. He did not sit down regretting and crying. He turned and he knew that he had a great destiny. When Stephen was being martyred, Paul, Saul then was seated and they placed their garments close to him. There was an idol worshiper called Abraham. Hallelujah. And he belonged to a land called All of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. His father had taught him idol worship. Listen, listen to me. Do you realize that Abraham was not supposed to be the father of faith? That prophetic destiny belonged to his father. Read your Bible. His father failed and he refused to align himself. And God called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, the first person God called was his father. And then God called him and said, Abraham, he said, come out. That's our first prayer point. Come out of your father's house. Come out of every failure. Come out of every regret. You will never be able to open up yourself for new things when you're still sitting to regret the past. Now I'd like you to lift your voice and I'd like you to prophesy and say the past is gone. The past is gone. The past is gone. Go ahead and pray. Shena na na mo so na 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 ne na na malia. 
Go ahead, pray. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the failures that are behind. Please pray. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. To the city of above, He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. Please look up. The Bible says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. The next prayer point is a prayer point of sincere humility and brokenness. To say, Lord, I take responsibility. Something about my mindset authorized the devil into my life. And I take responsibility and I ask for mercy tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Cry out for mercy. There's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Go ahead and pray. Please pray inside and outside. This is for your destiny. Pray. Pray. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. There is a mindset my family has that has authorized witchcraft that has authorized limitations there is a mindset I have that has made me a recurrent failure tonight I take responsibility Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. You can't keep being afraid of your destiny. There is a certainty. There is an assurance. I live, I live, I live. I live to praise your name. Though your beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Prophesy. going to pray. Listen. Hold on. The next prayer point is going to be very strategic because some of you will be delivered here right now. Hallelujah. 
you're going to command every devil and every spirit that has had access to leech onto your mindset and authorize hell you are going to pray and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus I command your hold over my mind to be lifted lift up your voice and pray come on pray koinonia strongholds we command spirits we command forces we command demons and devils Demon spirits, demon spirits that are being responsible, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern, demon spirits that are being responsible for God pattern. Pray. He must let you go tonight. Come on, pray. I no longer need you in my life. Spirits responsible for crystallizing mindsets and God patterns. They made my family poor. They made failures out of my family. No way. I arise to change. I arise to change things. Lift up your hands as I challenge those devils of darkness they must let you go there are spirits that have held on I tell you I see a lot of it as I stand on stage here but they must go right now the time is up it's a new season in the name of the Lord Jesus whose I am and whom I serve I decree and I declare that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been a victim of demonic forces spells yokes that have crystallized thought patterns that authorize Satan in your life in the name of Jesus and at the count of three let the fire man take it up let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit such a one and that those spirits must go I invoke it in the realm of the spirit right now at the count of three I like you to shout that name that is above all names listen listen I'm already seeing in the spirit there will be dramatic deliverances right now dramatic some of you you will feel fire from your hands and your head fire literally literally it must give way right now are you ready now at the count of three i invoke the powers of the heavens and i decree and i declare that every spirit that is responsible for wrong thought patterns at the count of three may it live your life now are you ready one two three I command those devils out, out, out. I command foul spirits. Inside and outside, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. 
I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let no spirit stand this fire. Let no devil stand this fire. Let no enchantment. I provoke that in the name of Jesus, every enchantment, every mystery that is responsible for casting spells and invocations over your mind to trap you in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God land upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. There is no hiding. I'd like you to lay your hands on your head. That's the instruction the Lord gives me. I tell you something will happen to some of you right now that will surprise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let those hands on your head become hands of fire. And I declare that every power, every power that is resting upon your mind and destiny, as you shout that name Jesus, let that fire bring freedom to you right now. Are you ready? One, two, three. I break courses. I break courses. I break courses. I break chinses. I command spells. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every altar, I don't care where it is, whether in your village, wherever, that is servicing any enchantment, any altar, Makoto Parade, Dekete Prokota, that has taken any sacrifice. That puts you in bondage right now at the count of three I command those altars to burn into pieces and that you be released one two three be free now I command those altars they burn with fire they burn with fire Oh, you must be free tonight. You must be free. It's time to rise to a new season. Hallelujah. Strongholds that keep mighty men to remain weak in life strongholds you would have gone to school for years but it made sure you never pass jam it works for everybody until it comes to your turn then you make a foolish decision you don't even know why you said what you said and it closes the door to you are going to sing this song I see a river flowing in the spirit this is what I see in the spirit fresh water and I believe that this is bringing freshness to many people thou O Lord art a shield for me give it your best as we sing that song prophesy it as your song of exodus out of certain nonsense he said, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. He said, and I shall be anointed. Let me tell you something. If you are not tired of failure in your life, you can go. But for as many who are saying, Lord, this is it. I am sick and tired. This year must not finish with my life like this. 
I'd like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My Lord, I want the increase that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say of my soul. But your prophecy tonight is that you, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for, for me. You're my glory. showing me something. I'm seeing a mask. A mask like the face of, of an idol or something. And there is a particular family I'm seeing that worships that thing. It's, it's, it's currently in your house. I don't know if it's in the village or somewhere, but I'm seeing a mask. A mask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whichever family this word is for, I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to a lady. We still have miracle service, but um men die in your family in fact right now there are only about one or two that are left from what the lord is showing me men whether they get married or whatever they just die mysteriously please who is that i'm just led to pray for the person my glory lift her up on my head My glory, hold your hands, both of you. Okay, you're part of it. Come, hold your hands. Please make sure you understand the word. Don't just be emotional about it. I see mysterious death. Men, not women. Men, men, men. Bible says for this purpose was the son of God made manifest that he may destroy that he may annihilate the works of darkness for this purpose I'm going to pray for you you are representing your families but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and that curse must be broken it must be broken for many of you they are covenants ordinances of darkness it's time for your destiny to go Lift those hands. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire. Let fire fall. Not just upon them. 
but upon the foundations of those families and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as I lay my hands upon you I command that those things are broken 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 in the name of Jesus 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 broken the cause out out of her I command I see a spirit I see a man wearing a red skirt I'm seeing a man wearing a red skirt in the name of Jesus release her destiny now 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 broken 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 I cause altars there is a cause in this family there is a cause in our family I set fire upon those altars of darkness I release everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus those altars in Cameroon I command fire upon those altars of witchcraft that ties your success and your progress Prophesy to you that this evil ends, this plague of death ends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It ends in the name of Jesus Christ. You are surrounding up, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. I would have done this next week, but the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a number of people. I see plots of darkness over your exams. Some of you, it has started happening to you. And there are things we must settle right now for you to write a meaningful exam. Some of you are getting into malpractice because of this pressure. Lift your hands. You study and you don't understand. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to start speaking not everybody but there are specific people that the hand of God will locate them I see academic chains chains you are not dull 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 lift your hands father in the name I see fire bursting Busting across the congregation. Everyone under any academic spell, help them please. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, as you shout that name, Jesus, you will feel fire. It will be on your hands. Hands, 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 hands. One, two, three. Release them. Release them now. Release them now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. of visitation has come. Come. Are you friends or sisters or something? You are sisters. Because I saw the same thing happening to you, happening to her. There is witchcraft in your family. And if that thing is not broken, who is married among you? You are married. Where's your husband, madam? 
is at home. I need to pray for you. Kai, this, this is evil. Ah! If I don't pray for you, well, it's not, it's a personal thing, but I need to pray for you so that you will not start having problems in your home. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I must pray for you. Number two, God wants to bring prosperity to your family. Huh? Look at me. This is the biggest desire of you and your husband. Is that true? As you are standing like this, you are, you are suffering. Things are not even working well because there is witchcraft. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My sister, look at me. There are four major things that are going to happen to your life between now and December. After I pray for you, I'm not going to say them now. But God will surprise you, He's going to shock you. Because you are a nice person. But you see, what is stopping your progress in life is witchcraft. I don't know if before now you believe that witchcraft exists or not. But if you don't, please believe it. Because you will see what will happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse the power of witchcraft. I stretch my hands over you and I command it to leave you now. I see something like a crown on your head. And I command that spirit to leave you. It goes never to return to you. And Father, these four things you have revealed may they happen. And let her see it. Madam, look at me. Go and tell your husband. November 17th. November 17th is a day of mighty breakthrough for the family. Mighty breakthrough for the family. God bless you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Hallelujah. Please just give me one or two minutes and then we'll round up. But let me just minister to one person. I'm seeing someone from your 200 level, they have never brought out your complete results till now. Please, who is that person? Either one will be missing or something. This is the sign the Lord is giving me. You, come. You are not the only one. I'm seeing a lady too. Please, don't just come out and be emotional about it. Who are you? You're wearing blue or something like that. Come, come and stand. Hold your hands. Ken, there is witchcraft in your family. And because of the greatness, the greatness that is upon you, you are going to become such a mighty man and a great man. But I see this thing haunting you, haunting you in a very serious way. I see that there is, there is a mantle of wealth and greatness upon your life. But then I've seen this thing happen because I'm seeing that this thing wants to frustrate your academics. Your scripts mysteriously missing. Who is he that speaks a thing and it will come to pass when the Lord has not declared it? I put the word of God upon your life and I declare right now every missing script I don't care where it is I command that the angels of God May they go to the Senate. May they go to your faculty and bring out your script right now. As I speak to you, I release their ministry right now. I release their ministry right now. I pray for two of you. Look at me. The two ladies. Look at me. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you. There's delay serious delay in your family. Very, very serious delay. And I'm going to pray. All of you have great destinies. And the Lord wants to lift you. Father, I pray and I curse witchcraft in the name of Jesus that everything that represents witchcraft, I curse it. Let your scripts be released. Let your scripts be released right now name of the Lord Jesus. I declare it. I decree it. Let it be established in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give Jesus thanks.
Alléluia. Abu, 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 I'm hearing that name, Abu. We're out of time. Is there anyone like that? Abu, that's A-B-U. Is it Abu? Yes, I'm hearing the name Abu. Who is that? Is that your name, your son name, Abu? Because the Lord wants me to pray over that family. Is there anyone like that? Please, quickly, come. Do you have an elder sister? Where is she? What's she doing? She's preparing to get married. I see serious trouble coming if we do not pray. Are you getting my point? I'm going to pray. There's serious trouble if we do not pray. I need to pray for your family because it's not like there was witchcraft in your family. There is still witchcraft. Huh? And the leaders in your family are the ones engaging in this directly. And this is affecting you people. It's bringing delay. One. Two. It's bringing lack of sustained spiritual growth in your life. And for your sister, I see this thing affecting her even in the area of her marital life. We have to destroy it right now. Father, I cause, because I'm seeing an animal, I'm seeing an animal that was given for sacrifice. I'm seeing an animal and it was done for this lady in the name of Jesus. I cause that thing right now. I command it to leave you. Mando Pratisha. That's why you feel in the night when you sleep like something is choking you. And I need to pray for you. You are very intelligent, but things are tied down in your life. Two of you hold your hands and lift it. Let me just. Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I cause witchcraft. Right now, every sacrifice that has been done, I declare it null and void. Null and void. I release both of you right now. Everything that is tied. Your health. Your health. Your health. Your health. Your health. The Lord is releasing your health right now. Your health. I release your health. Hold your hands together. The power of God is moving from these two ladies and it will move across this room. And there is a separation and it's on only ladies. Only ladies. Right now, as I lay my hands on them, it's happening across. Certain ladies, the fire of God will just come upon you. Let it be done now. 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 Now, now, the vistas of eagles for ladies. Shikai dika, mande ke prosko to bati kata. Shakata ta ta ba kata ba da 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 ba. Zoto protos kupandi kari adaba. Only ladies, the Holy Spirit told me. Only ladies, bring them out. Yeah 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 yeah. Deborah, I call you from the realm of the spirit. Deborah, I call you from the realm of the spirit. I call for Deborah, Deborah mantles. I call them forth from the realm of the spirit. It's filling over outside, outside. I'm seeing a cloud moving outside. Deborah, 
are catching the fire of the spirit. Lord, we give you praise. That, ma that madam on green, the Lord is going to begin to open your eyes. Where you are, an angel of the Lord is standing close to you right now. And I see an impartation of the spirit of revelation. Now, take it where you are. Mankata barakate teleko shoposkaba. According to the time of life, return with your baby. Now, return with your baby. Now, according to the time of life, we put an end to anything. Let my king be lifted up. Oh. Bring that lady. Bring her. For the angels who did not keep their original estate. What are you doing in this body? It's time for you to leave now. Without manifestation, don't waste our time. Out! Hold your peace and leave now. Never to return. And as you go, let there be a restoration of everything. In the name of the Christ of God. You leave now. And let this family experience breakthroughs. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you. It ends. It ends. The captivity of 17 years ends. In the name of Jesus. It ends. Bring her. Jesus, you believe that I am. The Lord will use you. But before he uses you, that devil of darkness must let you go. Therefore, I speak to you. I see you in the spirit. There is no hiding. You are not of God. And I judge you by the authority of the kingdom I represent. Let her go right now. In the name of Jesus. Let her go right now. fibroid fibroid i'm seeing fibroid we are going to pray we'll pray for every sick person who has come but let's just flow as the holy ghost can i talk to her madam come if you're coming out here for fruit of the womb make sure you are married properly married please we are christians hallelujah fruit of the womb how many years? Just one year now. This one year. Yes, sir. But uh, it's ah, look at what I'm seeing in the spirit. But the devil is very wicked. I'm looking at this woman and I kept quiet. And then the Lord began to show me Steve. I saw an angel of the Lord bringing a child. Right? Listen to me. But then immediately it entered this realm. I just saw blood. Then I saw an angel coming with a child again. And when it entered this realm, I saw blood. How many times have you had Miska? Two times. Two times. This is what I saw in the spirit. That as the angel of the Lord brought a child, but in this realm, I saw blood and it was miscarriage. But Jesus is Lord. See, I'm not doing anything. There is absolutely nothing. This is Jesus the Christ. The one who should be exalted. Madam, you believe in the Lord. That's why you are here. According to the time of life, I speak to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will stand before the people of God with your miracle baby. And I see God cleaning your stomach so that they don't tell you there is an infection. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus. 
is over right now. Return with your miracle baby in Jesus' name. You too. You're married. Fruit of the womb. What did the doctors tell you? They said there's fibroid. There's fibroid. Because as I was standing, I was hearing fibroid. Fibroid. Come and stand. Listen to me. You will go to ease yourself pass out this whole fiber physically you will see it coming out you believe in miracles huh? because the solution is not operation they will operate you and then it will come back again this is what I'm saying huh? it's not about operation there is a name that is above all names I'm not a medical doctor I'm not negating medicine are you getting my point I'm just ministering in the capacity drink of the wine of the spirit may you never be the same never be the same never be the same not only prayer fire but you are receiving the healing anointing is coming from your spirit the same thing is happening to you both of them please lift your hands there is the healing anointing that will come upon some people right now. Lift your hands. Father, as many of those people right now, right now, right now, it's going to come as fire. I see liquid fire in the spirit. Go ahead and shout Jesus once. One to go. Receive it. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. Receive it now, inside and outside. Receive it now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Someone hold Shade, hold Shade so she doesn't fall. Hold her, but the healing anointing is coming on her. It's, it's, it's more of a scary, because it has always been there. It has always been there. Three of you, hold your hands. Ken, Kenny, I promise. Hold your hands. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, take it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Step into new levels, new levels of the anointing, new levels of the power of the Spirit, new dimensions in the Spirit. Hold, place, place one hand on your stomach. Say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I believe in you. Let fibroid, Let fibroid pass out of my body now. Pass out of my body now. Now watch what happens to you. You prayed it yourself. Fibroid, you are a spirit. Benga, lift your hands. There is an angel standing close to you. Take it now. My dear, touch this lady for me. The Lord has heard your prayer. Come, come, please save time. Come. Look at me. What is wrong? Why are you crying? It's okay. Cherub, Jesus is here. Tonight is a night of divine solutions. Look at me. Lay your hands on your stomach. Let there be a visitation, oh God. Right now. I cause evil. It ends. I appoint it to end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear. You will return with your miracle baby in the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold my hands and look at me. The Lord is touching your stomach. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hmm. 
be made whole right now in Jesus' name. You, Adam, where is he? He's at home. What's he doing? He's working. He's working. And he's preparing for his wedding. He's preparing for what? His wedding. His wedding. Yes. We have to pray so that you will not have an accident on the road. Huh? Where is where are they doing the wedding? Don't be afraid. Go. I'm not a prophet of doom. There's no room. This is this is the word. There is only light. You understand? Hold my hands. Lord, in Jesus' name. Let there be perfection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my dear. You are what? Abigail. Abigail. Where's your mother, my dear? She's at home. She's at home. Yeah. Let's pray for her. The Lord wants to bring miracles for her. There's someone with. You came with a picture of someone. Is it that he's abroad or abroad? He's abroad. Because this is what I'm seeing. Hold on now. This is a picture abroad. Eh? She do travel there, but now she's in Abuja. She travels abroad. Who is yes, she? Yes, my auntie. Fruit of the womb. She got married. Hold on now. <laughs> Let me talk to you. I'm seeing four lines on this picture. How many years has she been married? Since 2006. I'm seeing four lines. She's had at least, has she had miscarriages? Yes, but I don't know how many times. This is four. I'm seeing one, two, three, four. Four different miscarriages. They even wanted to try. Um, anyway, that's not the issue. You believe Jesus Christ will have you. Lord Jesus Christ, you are mighty in our midst. Glorify your son. Right now, let the power of God touch her. Let it touch you through her. In the name of Jesus, you return with your miracle. My dear, let me pray for your mother. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be healing for her mother. And let there be healing for you in Jesus' name. Your sister, what's wrong with her? She got married since 2003 and still up to now. She no been. fruit of the womb. Where are you from? I'm from Gardner State. I won't say it here, but you see, let me speak a parable. When Jesus comes into your life, when you need the help of God, you can't mix salt water and clean water. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Huh? You can't come and mix salt water and then you want Jesus Christ to add fresh water on top. If you are for God, you must seek him completely. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about them. You see, when we become desperate for a change, we are humans. And I know that a lot of people will start suggesting a lot of things. Jose, is a, it's not like he's a herbalist. He used to just see. Look, let me tell you. We've shared this. You can get my teaching on the mysteries of the kingdom. Herbalists and demonic people, they work with. They manipulate spiritual laws, correct spiritual laws. But it is not a spiritual law that makes you a Christian. It is that it must be initiated and sustained by only the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Ken, God is visiting your family. God is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Ella, the Lord is visiting your family. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord and I'm seeing them going to Kano in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is visiting your family and even you is visiting you. What is happening to you is restoration. Restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is bringing restoration. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for sick people now. So if you came with um, your sick, immediately I pray for this lady. Now is the time so that we can minister to the sick. It's amazing that this is a vigil and it's already morning. Praise God. Um, sweetheart, look at me. What's her name? Ladi. 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 In the name of Jesus, Ladi, we bring you the power of the kingdom. By the mercy of God, we command be made whole right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, return with your child. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you came here specifically for healing, any part of this country or this city, please come out right now. It's time for you to be healed. 
Time for you to be healed. Come and stand. Please, ushers, just line them up. God is already touching people. Look how many people came specifically to be healed. Hallelujah. Steve, can you come and just lead us in worship while we do that? Please don't remain. Don't worry, we are patient. This is a miracle service. We're not here to waste your time. Please be patient. No fighting, no nothing. Jesus Christ is going to step in. No matter what the situation is. Listen to me. No matter what the situation is, I'd like you to believe in Jesus. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, we Jesus, there is healing in your name. Now, some of you stood here for healing, but the Lord is going to be touching other areas of your life. But please, we are ministering specifically to sick people. We have very few minutes and we have to do a lot of things. Please make sure that you connect while you're seated. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. As Steve leads us in worship, I'd like us to connect to what God is doing because there are still at least two or three things that we have to do. Praise God. And in case you've not written your prayer request, God answers prayers in this place. Those of you crying, stop crying. Stop crying. I'm seeing a lot of people crying and it's touching me. My dear, please stop crying. Jesus will visit you. Listen, never criticize the healing ministry. You don't know the pain people are going through. No, there are families here. There are people just standing here. But I tell you the truth, they are dying. There are families that are dying. Look how many people. They all sang praise and worship. Pastor, truly, truly, the reality of God's power must, while we try to teach them to live in that reality of divine health, God is still merciful enough to help them. We cannot. Are you getting my point? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the ability to heal the sick. We truly give you the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your healing power be strong. Let every infirmity in this place bow to the Lordship of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let every infirmity bow. As I lay my hands upon you, the Lord sets you free. Sister, look at me. Heal! Now! your stomach the lord is setting you free so please let's be organized while they lead worship those of us seated please be praying in tongues and connecting there are so many things we are going to do thank you jesus let the name of the lord be exalted in the name of jesus go ahead oh jesus be What is wrong? This is stroke. Complete stroke. You are unable to move. Oh, the devil is wicked. What is this? Father, would you do a miracle in our daddy's body right now? I curse the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Let life come to your limbs in the name of Jesus Christ. Let life come to your limbs. You are going to walk right now in Jesus name
You believe that? Look at me. Sir, in the name of Jesus, walk. Come. 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 Are you feeling strength? Come. Walk. Don't be afraid. You will not fall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing. I give you all the praise. I give you all the place. I, I loosen all of the nerves. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Please exercise yourself around. You can turn back. Exercise yourself. Give Jesus praise. Careful. Careful for him. This is completely paralyzed of stroke. The devil is so wicked. So wicked. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead Steve. Let's save time. Thank you Jesus Christ. My dear. It's okay. Stop crying. Why are you crying? <laughs> You are what? Spirit husband. The Bible says male and female, not female and spirit. Male and female. Look at me. Weep not. When Jesus steps in, there is hope. Oh, I love Jesus. Look at me. You believe Jesus will set you free? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Ready? Go ahead. Jesus! 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 Out! Out of her now. Out! I challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That wicked spirit. Out! 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 This lady has been going to church every Sunday. Yet this spirit has been comfortably sitting down. Her academic zero. Everything zero. You leave now never to return. Now! Never to return. For the blood speaks. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. For you are glorious, sleep and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb upon the throne. And I'm done. Out, 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 now, Mama, be healed. I rebuke the spirit. The blood of the voice. You are the For you, Gloria. For you are the Lord. has come not just to you but to your entire family this morning Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ where are you please let's save time please let's save time time is not on our side come 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 it's true. there is nothing working what is Anambra Anambra Street. Anambra, I know, I know. What is Anambra? What do you have to do with Anambra? No, I have nothing to do. I'm from Adria. Because I'm seeing Anambra. Who is, who is there? Is there anyone from there? 
No, I'm seeing a lady. Oh, this is a lady. No, this is a lady. And I'm seeing an Ambra. Huh? I think so. maybe you are from the state or something like that. Who? Um, no, no, let me just. I know there are many people. Just follow. Come. Please, let's save time. There is so much to do. Jesus, <coughs> let this idol that I see, I'm looking at this lady and I'm not seeing her face. I'm seeing the face of something that is as old as 127 years old. It's something that they worship in an Ambra state. This is what the Lord is showing me. And it has tied down her life. Because I'm seeing chains, but the chains are made up of snakes in the name that is above all names. Be set free now. I lay my hands upon you as an envoy of God's presence. Be free. Be free now. Let our family go. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Daddy, where are the children? to pray for you sir things will turn around in your life I want to assure you all the way from where sir from Kaduna you came from Kaduna Jesus well, don't worry you understand I know what is wrong with you this is not word of knowledge I'm aware but I want you to know that Jesus is Lord no matter how impossible it is with men it must go you are not alone. There are many people with this same thing in this place. In the Lord Jesus is there. Hold my hands. You are risen from the dead. You are Lord. Light is shining in the darkness. Jesus. this devil right now let her go out in the name of Jesus Christ lay your hands on your stomach my dear I release the power of God I set you free now in the name of Jesus Christ daddy I'm seeing both of your hands tied down and the Lord is telling me to release you financially things are buried down is that true I'm sorry, Steve. I'm sorry. Financially very down. And I've been battling with diabetes and hiccup. Hiccups? Hiccup. When it started, it seemed like it was trying to block my chest. How long has this been, sir? It started February. This year? Yes. You came and here? I had been hospitalized for two times on that. On this? Yes. Jesus is going to heal you right now. I mean, Oh, Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I don't know what would have done for people except for the power of the Holy Spirit. Daddy, be healed right now. Please hold my hands. May you begin to prosper by the Spirit of God. I release you and your family members. Be healed. Diabetes, be healed. I rebuke that devil of infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. All right, Steve, please lead us in worship. Let's hurry up. There are so many people. Please don't worry. I mustn't. Listen, let me tell you something. I think I need to explain something. I don't have to prophesy, like mention your case. Are you getting my point? For you to know that, okay, the Lord is going to touch you. Not at all. So you don't have to push people. Everyone who are going to minister to you. Why are you crying? Come. 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 What's the problem, my dear? What's the problem? Oh, what? Kidney infection and HIV. You know that physically speaking, this is a death sentence. Kidney plus HIV. But not when Jesus, not when he steps in. Sweetheart, with men, it is impossible. But the Lord will give you brand new kidneys right now. 
and that devil of HIV must pack his load and live your life. See, you know, the reason why many of us never have the anointing is because we don't have the patience to help people. We just want to shine. If you truly care about people, compassion is what moves the release of the anointing. When I see people cry, it affects me. I remember the things that I saw in the spirit. My dear, there is a way. And Jesus is that way. Are you listening to me? I make boast to tell you that you will be healed. Absolutely. It's not trial and error. Look at, look at how, how many people are crying. You just see people standing. But some people have already, it's like they've signed their death warrant. I speak to every hopeless situation in this place. In the name of Jesus, like the dry bones in Ezekiel's valley, there is hope for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, bless you, Steve. Thank you, Jesus. Heal! Now! Brand new kidneys. HIV never return. Cause that virus, it leaves your body right now. You will check and there will be no trace, no single trace. And I command those dead kidneys, let brand new kidneys come from heaven. already eating her legs. They are now tying it. Hold my hands. I curse that spirit. Right now. Be gone. Mommy, please don't cry. This is an elderly woman. Help her with it. I'm catching this. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. I curse that devil. That pain. That abdominal pain. It leaves now. In the name of Jesus Christ, it leaves now. 
she's a worker in this house and in the name of Jesus Christ she's entitled to the blessings that follow kingdom service therefore I set you free and the Lord sets your family free in the name of Jesus Christ mama please don't cry this will dry up in Jesus name God bless you If they pray for you, you can go. We don't have time to take testimonies. It's already morning. Hallelujah. We will take any testimonies next week. Thank you, Jesus. Mommy, I heal in Jesus' name. Out! I am serving. I am serving. He's a living God. Spirit, they disturb him. Eh? Eh? What's he say? I mean, my son, is the person. Eh? Speechless, man. It's okay, daddy, don't worry. Ooh. Jesus will solve it in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, Jesus is about to touch the whole family. My brother, what's the issue? I have spiritual, spiritual things. Spiritual things. Yeah, but a spiritual thing is it's not like you are, you see, please, let me explain something. Jesus is not a magician. You have to press into God. No matter how much I pray for you now, you see, these spirits will live, but ultimately your passion and your desire for spiritual things. Are you following me now? You must be ready to truly commit your all and walk with Jesus. This is the ultimate remedy. Because you are a great man. Please, when I make the altar call, please don't hesitate to come out. Lord Jesus, I cast that spirit right now. He will be healed right now. Let him go. In the name of Jesus. That in the name of Jesus, the Lord touches you. Cast that spirit out! She will not die. Out! That devil of stroke. Out! Are you seeing? Hold on, please. You see, hold on. Are you, are you seeing paralysis? You see that this lady is already paralyzing from her face down because it's the devil of darkness. Let her go now. I curse you by the name of the God of heaven. You must let her go. Bless you, Steve. Sorry I keep interrupting. I just want to use this and explain certain things. My dear, this whole twisting of your face will go down. This is a lovely lady. Praise God.
better go. I have victory. to walk around and correct the prayer requests please please this is a time to pass your prayer requests and for those online media people let's have it so that we can as soon as we're done we can pray on it hallelujah praise the lord you are the most you are the most Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. 
Let's all rise on our feet. This is the last session. I love this part because this is where we get to invoke the presence of God. There is no matter how many things we see, no matter how many people we minister to, this is a representation of the hunger and the desperation of almost everyone here. The Bible says, unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come hallelujah i want you to know that the lord god of heaven answers prayers in this place this is not just some religious activity hallelujah praise the lord pastor ike let me invite you to join me as we pray over this request now i want you to stretch your hands those outside stretch your hands towards the projector and let's just pray in tongues for two to five minutes as we speak over this request. This represents the desire of God's people. Steve, you can join me too. Go ahead, stretch your hands as we pray. Go ahead, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Rambo Kosuto Protogodobo Shubalada. seconds 60 more seconds to begin to declare war in the spirit lift up your voice and begin to declare 60 more seconds rato go bamba li cabro no shande gele bala de gede bando loca ricati se gele bro no kamba bali gele bo kolo brana gala bando get to the bolo sana bala bando gele bro kamba de gala bando mapo tele bala nangra bala de gole bo shande gala bando 
Satele Bukapanagana Bredegedebo Sanaga, Gitala Brogolabo Sitelegadaba. You have 15 more seconds. Lift up your voice and declare right now. Basopa Malabo Pabali Gedele Tanariaba, Mabroko Pandelegedebo Sandegadaba, Rapete Gedebo Pandigilibe, Gingelegadabo Sandegadaba, Usiana Nambo Timbalegadaba, Otiana Manangala Manangalo Setegadaba. Batolo boki de balande gele bo, baso pike brande kande, lingro lingro linga tanglo tanglo manalbe, ipo sande gele bo, tu taya taya po sana bayaba, ipo lo sana balaba. I want you to declare a thunderous amen in Jesus' mighty name. Only those are the overflow. I need to hear your voice in Jesus' mighty name. Let all the people in the room lift up your voice and shout in Jesus' mighty name. Let every nation, every tribe, every tongue give a thunderous amen in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, make sure your two hands is connected to somebody. The Bible declares, Behold how beautiful, how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible declares, For there God commands his blessing when there is unity in the house. I need you to just squeeze our hands. Hold the hand by you. In that name that is above every other name, the name that makes demons tremble, the name that makes barren womb open. The name that makes blind eyes open. The name that makes the sick to be healed. In that name that guarantees an answer. We call on that name as a family. We call on that name as a body. We call on that name united this morning. We decree and declare every secret petition. We decree and declare every prayer request. We decree and declare every heart desire. We decree and declare by the unction and the authority vested on me by the man of God of this house. I decree and declare answers Answers, answers, answers right now in Jesus' name. Oh my God, you are not saying amen. You are not echoing amen. Let the living shout amen. And so Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We exalt your name. We lift you far above all else. For there is absolutely no God like you. We ask, oh God, that one more time, prove yourself. The God of the Apostle Selma. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. And their father Abraham. We decree and declare every secret petition is answered it's answered in Jesus mighty name and finally let every living soul shout the name of Jesus seven times to seal this great miracle can we go right now one, two shout Somebody shout! 
Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! When you want to shout the seventh time, I need you to jump on your feet and shout the name that's above all the names. Everybody shout! Jesus! 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 Hallelujah! 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 This is the best part of the meeting for me right now. What is about to happen? Because this is where many of you will see the creative power of prophecy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. It's already 5.30. Can you imagine? Soon we'll be out of this place. But I'd like you to know that something is about to change in your life. Truly, truly, I believe that this is the greatest part of this meeting. Because when the word of God comes your way, it does something remarkable. Hallelujah. There's someone, we don't have time, you don't have to come out now. There's someone you've been trusting the Lord. And um, in fact, I'm seeing is a lady. And you're insisting that you must marry by December. And this is a very serious thing. You've, you've implicated yourself. You've said December. But the Lord is showing me April 2015. You are one of them. My dear, you. I'm seeing a lady. God is giving you a word. So don't kill yourself for nothing and say, I must marry. If you want to marry tomorrow, the devil will bring somebody for you. But you see, you have to be careful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. And bones began to be joined to bones. When Jesus appeared to me, one of the things that he did to me was to allow the light of his glory and his presence to enter into my being. And so every time I open my mouth to prophesy, that's all I see, that light. It's like a drug. It steps into your destiny and creates the Garden of Eden. Whatever it is, please, I'd like you to believe. Please. People have changed. The power of God is already moving. Help them, please. I know that we have abused prophecy. And in the country around, many people make so much boast about understanding the prophetic. But in reality, you see, um, the creative dimension of God's word is the strongest level of the operation of the word. The ability to make something out of nothing. Many of us just know the revelatory dimension. But if anything will ever happen in your life, it will take the power, the creative power. Hallelujah. So as I pray, in this few minutes, I'd like you to shout Amen from the depths of your heart. And I want you to receive. You can choose to argue it and go back the same. Especially for those of us who um, came from far and near. People traveled all the way. Some have been here all through the week. Please. Because you must return with a testimony. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to say. He is mighty to say. Forever, author of salvation. He will conquer the grave. Let's sing one more time. Savior, he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. 
the name that is above all names i prophesy to everyone who is trusting god for direction for the next level of his life be it marriage be it whatever you are at a crossroad and you need the voice of god may you hear the voice of the lord in the name of jesus i prophesy clarity in the name of jesus you don't have to bring them out just just leave them you don't have to bring them out again we're out of time i prophesy everyone who is already moving the wrong direction either as a result of wrong advices or wrong perceptions about the path of both spiritual and physical progress in the name of jesus may the lord redirect your steps now may the lord redirect your steps now may the lord redirect your steps now anyone about to leave the geography of your anointing as a result of wrong counsel or the quest for greener pastures the bible says there is a way that seemeth right you must be at the geography of your grace to thrive and isaac sowed not everywhere in that land in the name that is above all names may you hear the voice of his majesty as you sleep tonight may you hear the voice of his majesty i pray for every bond here who is experiencing stagnation you are marking time and instead of you to make progress you are not moving by extension to every family in the name that is above all names the lord told moses why are you crying to me tell the people to move forward i prophesy over your destiny move forward now move forward now move forward now make progress now make progress now i prophesy over those trusting god to settle down maritally every power of darkness tying down your marital destiny in the name of jesus that embargo is lifted now by the blood of jesus that embargo is lifted now sisters i open your marital doors now in the name of jesus no more shall this proverb be used in your life may the lord change your story hallelujah because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness and that oil sets you above your fellows in the name of jesus the anointing that distinguishes you man so from today everywhere you go be distinguished now help them please so that they don't preach. be distinguished now be distinguished now no more will you be common no more will you be like the rest the hand of god is upon you no more will you be common i prophesy from the depths of my heart let an anointing that distinguishes you rest upon you now all those trusting god for jobs let me there's nothing as joblessness the bible says he saw them idle and he said why standest ye idle and they say no man employ us he told them go to the vine 
when God speaks, there must be job. In the name of the Lord Jesus, wherever your job is, I don't care what the limiting factors are, there is a superior advantage because you are in Christ. Therefore, I invoke man tato sotobala by the ministry of destiny help us wherever you need to be called wherever your cv is i provoke a miracle job now 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 Hallelujah. I pray for everyone called barren in this place. Anyone called barren in this place. I declare to you according to the word of the Lord. That according to the time of life. May you return with your miracle child. May you return with your miracle child. I speak it. I establish it in the spirit. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 It says son of man what seest thou And he said four horns These are the horns That have lifted up themselves against Israel Against Jerusalem And against Judah So that no man will lift up his head He said but I have sent carpenters in the name that is above all names the lord told me he will bring breakthrough i want to prophesy it now now whatever has limited you whatever has limited your family right now in the name that is above all names i come with the rod of a higher priesthood and i command every limitation be broken now limitations be broken now Limitations I sense the anointing of the Holy Ghost Limitations be broken now Be broken now Be broken now Let the power of God Break every limitation now Hallelujah He told Saul, he said, as you return, you will see three men holding bread, but two of them will give it to you. Does that mean they didn't want the bread for themselves? In the name that is above all names. The favor of God that can end the struggles in a man's life. Please believe the prayer I'm praying for you. Please believe it. It's not by power. There is a realm of ease that comes by the favor of God. Therefore, in the name that is above all names, I prophesy, receive favor. Favor. Let the Esther anointing come upon you now. Favor with men. Favor with God. Favor with kings. Favor with destiny help us. In the name of Jesus. Every wine presser and baker that needs to speak to the king on your behalf in the name that is above all names we provoke their ministry now. We provoke their ministry now. We provoke their ministry now. hallelujah whatever you have been trying to do and you don't you don't seem to make progress you keep going around cycles of the same thing in the name that is above all names everything you have tried and failed go and do it again this time with the anointing in the name of jesus everything you have tried to do and you failed i provoke an anointing upon your life and with this anointing go back 
and do it again he said master we have toiled all night but he said nevertheless at thy word i bring the word of the lord to your life now what did not work before let it begin to work now hallelujah i pray for every family going through pain and suffering and limitation and bondage every family represented here he said as for me and my house not as for me alone as for me and my house hallelujah in the name of jesus may the fire of god may the fire of the holy ghost bring advancement in every family represented here i command every family make progress move forward make progress move forward move forward hallelujah i speak over everyone here and every family anyone marked for death anyone marked for death oh earth i speak hear the word of the lord we forbid the earth from taking the body of anyone here you remain immortal until your assignment is complete you do not live by the sword therefore you will not die by the sword in the name of jesus you are separated from the wickedness and the harassment of terrorism you are separated from the pestilence and the plagues that cause men to be afraid in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ and for many who are students here mando kasikete pakadata rakatoposku prendikitabalal in the name of jesus every yoke of academic bondage in the name that is above all names i command be free from it now 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 therefore i release upon you the spirit of excellence receive the spirit of excellence on common speed academic exploits in the name of jesus hallelujah for every ministry every business everything that is dead and grounded in the name that is above all names like the dry bones in the valley of ezekiel i command life to it now i command life now i command life now in the name of the lord jesus christ i command life now hallelujah everyone in ministry in this place i pray for you let the doors of opportunity be open up to you you were not designed to market yourself the bible said let her walk speak for her at the gates i command everything stopping your walk from speaking for you let there be an anointing that announces you in the name of jesus christ every struggle in any area of ministry we call it to end now in the name of jesus and anyone who is in ministry and you are confused you really don't know where you stand you don't know the spiritual paradigm you should be representing in the name that is above all names let there be clarity absolute clarity in the name of jesus now lift up your hands i want to pray for your finances in the name that is above all names first and foremost i cause the spirit of greed that stops you from engaging the principles that will bring true wealth and abundance i command the giving grace to come upon you in the name of jesus i cause the spirit of greed 
let it be far from your life in the name of Jesus grace for you to be a faithful tither grace for you to be a faithful giver grace for you to be a kingdom investor may God give you wisdom may God give you favor may God bless the works of your hands therefore I release a supernatural anointing for you to prosper receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus God gives you wisdom God gives you ideas in the name of Jesus hallelujah everyone here who is trusting God and is saying Lord restore everyone here who had a better yesterday that is saying Lord if there was a way I can turn the hands of time I prophesy to you there is a God that can turn the hands of time and cause men to experience restoration therefore in the name that is above all names we bring back into your life every opportunity that was once lost in the name of Jesus opportunity for favor receive it opportunity for healthy connections every opportunity in your life that has been wasted by the favor and the mercy of God we call back that opportunity to return in the name of Jesus Christ we call it to return in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I pray finally whatever has made you cry in the name that is above all names whatever has brought tears out of your eyes because you were in a state where nothing and no one could help you in the name that is above all names may my God arise for you and that everyone who has laughed at you and said where is their God in the name that is above all names that God will arise for you my God will arise for you my God will arise for you now hold on before we round up we are finishing by 6 6 on the dot I'll take 5 minutes and do something fast and we're going to have hot praise for 5 minutes we can't go without praise you seal these things that God is doing with praise hallelujah now keep standing everybody I want to make an altar call right now please hallelujah there are many people here inside and outside you've heard the word of the Lord you've experienced the power of God the touch of God the ministry of God's servants and God's vessels but you have not made a decision for Jesus Christ you may be a Christian but you've not truly made a genuine decision for Jesus Christ and then there are others you once made a decision for Jesus Christ truly but you found yourself derailing right now in the name of Jesus I want to give you an opportunity the Lord is asking you to return home this is one of the greatest miracles I know that there are many of us outside forget about your friends and whoever you came with you're saying Lord I'm coming to commit myself genuinely I'm inviting you right now as I count five one God bless you God bless you appreciate them two I know they are coming God bless you please hurry up and come it's a great thing it's a great thing three appreciate them I believe there are so many other people that the Lord is speaking to don't be afraid this is a family don't be ashamed it's time to come to Jesus genuinely genuine repentance not emotional hype to make a decision that determines the next course of your life Four. God bless them you're still coming I believe that the Holy Ghost is still speaking to some other people don't remain there five i'll begin to pray now but you can still come and join us god bless you the devil is a liar no power will stop you in case the lord is still speaking to you please find your way run to jesus it's the greatest decision you will ever make in your life hallelujah those of us here thank you so much for coming we salute your courage i want to lead you to make the greatest prayer and decision in your life 
after all is said and done in this life, this is all that will matter. The quality of the decision you have made today will determine your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus. Please mean it from the depth of your heart. Don't recite it like a poem. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe you died for me. You shed your blood for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare today that I'm saved. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. I denounce sin and Satan. The power of sin is broken over my life. From today, I arise a champion. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Make me an ambassador for the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for these ones. They have come before you. Spirit of the living God, I pray that you preserve them. Let their decisions be genuine. Grace for them to stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please arise. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. Just follow the gentleman waving his hands. Appreciate them, Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, let me just perform two quick functions. Pastor Ike came with his CDs. How many of you were blessed by the ministry of Pastor Ike? Come on, celebrate grace. Koinonia, you know better than this. Celebrate grace. Hallelujah. He's here with his CDs. He brought as much as one, two, three, four, five, five complimentary copies for me. Please help me tell him thank you. Hallelujah. They are available. I believe that um, there are some with Jordan Bookstore. And I believe that it's possible to get probably a few limited copies. Very powerful. Really very powerful. And um, let me use the opportunity to just introduce to us one more time. Aaron Dandodo and Susan Legbo, where are you? They are getting married on the 18th. Aaron, quickly. Susan. Let this be the way they clap for you during your wedding. <laughs> You will reap what you sow. Where is she? You are not doing again. Hallelujah. There are wonderful, faithful people in this house. Aaron has been with us for years. And Susan is a member of the prayer band. Praise the Lord. And um, we thank God for what God is doing. Stretch your hands pray for them. Their wedding is on the 18th. They will be tying the knot in Mina. Pray for them. Say, Lord, every resource required is provided. And many of you, God may lead you to sow seeds into their lives. Go ahead. Go ahead. So connect with what God is doing. Connect with what God is doing. Lord, we ask that you bless them. Bless Aaron. Bless Susan. We bless your wedding. Most importantly, we bless your marriage. May you experience the hand of God in your home in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Please celebrate them one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, Pastor Yinka will be um, will be called a husband proper. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give God all the praise. A few people left the day before yesterday to grace the wedding. Um, the wedding of Aaron and Susan will be at UMCA Church behind Mr. Biggs Tonga at Mina State. Reception is at Honorable Justice Idris Legbo Hall near the government house at Mina Niger State. As many of us, Aaron has been a blessing to the body of Christ. Please let's invest our resources, and then our presence. Um, this is from the prayer department. There will be massive Holy Ghost baptism on Tuesday. For those of us who have been trusting God, please, if you are here, for adventure, you are new, and you've not been filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in fluent tongues, fluent tongues, not just talking anyhow. You need to receive a real baptism, genuinely. Join the prayer band Tuesday, the 30th, of September, 
at Rema Chapel. Time is 4 p.m. Please invite your friends and loved ones. Project 10,000 is still on. Please be part of it. And the Lord will help you. Praise the Lord. You can book for counseling immediately after the service. Uh, the protocol department will be waiting here. Please, if you are coming for counseling from another state, would advise that you come at least on Sunday. Praise God. Or at least Monday, leave early in the morning so that um, you can come and be settled. Praise the Lord. The booking ends tomorrow by 6 p.m. The free bus transport is limited immediately after the service. For those going to Shikan Congo, please wait at the projector stand outside. Take note of our official lines, both um, um, the protocol and the media lines. Please take advantage of them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I also want to announce that the general workers retreat has been shifted. Please, all workers, because of the um, nature of the weekend, please and please, we have decided to shift it so that everyone can rest. Hallelujah. The various heads of department will communicate this accordingly. Okay. The audition for the worship team will be on the 1st of October. Hallelujah. So all applicants, please make sure you mark that date and prepare. You can meet your head of department immediately after the service for more information. Hallelujah. School of Ministry students, we're not having lectures today again. Please, our lectures will be tomorrow since there's no retreat again. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. prompt. 2 p.m. prompt. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please announce it to those who are coming in from Kaduna if they are not around so that they don't bother taking um, the pain to come and then not. We just want everybody to rest. So everyone you can use today and rest. There are other meetings. CGC is having its uh, convention and then there is a program that is happening in, I think, God Life today. Um, Aaron and... Um, one of the business experts, they are putting on a program. So there are many things happening at the same time. It's quite a busy weekend. And for many of us who have been preparing for this meeting, so please afterwards, take out time and rest. Those who have been fasting, it's time to eat. Praise the Lord, so that you don't die in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me take this time to appreciate the Orions. Please, I'd like you to celebrate them. Please, Koinonia, celebrate them. It's an investment of honor. Hallelujah. I want us to celebrate the redeemed dancers. Wonderful. It was so, so lovely. Hallelujah. I'd like us to celebrate the man of God, Steve Strings. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. We love you. Love you. We truly honor you. I'd like us to celebrate the dear woman of God. Goodness, I was blown away. Please. Rosemary, please celebrate her. Thank you. Thank you so much. May the Lord honor you. Thank you for coming all the way. And I'd like us to celebrate Pastor Ike and his wonderful wife. I think she should stand here and let's see her. Pastor, you spoke so much about her. Please, ma. You know she's not. Come on now. Pastor, do it for us. Those of you who plan to be bad husbands, that's going to be the last prophecy before we leave. May God change your mindset in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please celebrate them. May your home be like this. Every Tom and Jerry marriage, I curse it in Jesus' name. Bless you, man. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. And then I'd like us to celebrate every department in this house. Wonderful people. Wonderful people. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our online community. There are more people following online than you can imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. All those worshiping with us for the first time, as we round up, please, I'd like you to come out. We have a prayer and a blessing for you. Make your way to the front, inside and outside. Make your way to the front right now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Please come, those who are worshiping with us for the first time. This is your first time here, aside from our invited guests. You're welcome. Don't let anyone sit down around you who is coming here for the first time. We have a prayer 
and a blessing for you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Pastor. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. Your life will never be the same. Thank you for the investment of your time. This is our vigil and we bless God for your presence. I guarantee you that you will return with such a hunger for spiritual things. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Father, we bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will meet your expectations beyond your imagination. You are blessed. As you return, you return with the presence of God. You return with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, I'd like you to just follow the gentleman waving his hands. He will have your information and he will welcome you more warmly on our behalf in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace. After that, we're going to have five minutes of hot praise. Hallelujah. Pastor Ike will round up this meeting with hot praise. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I'll be here very briefly to say hi to as many people. God bless you. Pastor Sam. Hey, my God is good, yo. Hey, my God is good, yo. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, my God is good, yo. Somebody worship, somebody pray. 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 To say yeah.